Typically, we treat trigeminal neuralgia with medication, and these medications usually take the form of anti-seizure medications. Most patients are able to control the pain with such medications, but sometimes it's not successful, and it may be unsuccessful either because the pain simply doesn't go away with those drugs, or it may be unsuccessful because they have to take such high quantities of these drugs that they may be pain-free, but they're having side effects. Usually those side effects are basically feeling loopy. You're somnolent, you don't think clearly, you have confusion. And when either one of those situations occurs, we may have to move to a procedure to try and alleviate the patient's pain. Historically, that procedure was simply to cut the trigeminal nerve and make the entire face numb but that has many problems in and of itself. And so nowadays we try to do other things. A large percentage of trigeminal neuralgia is caused by injury to the nerve by an artery. Where the nerve exits the brainstem, there are several arteries in that location, and one of them may with time come to lie against the nerve. And if that happens, uh, it can irritate the nerve and cause breakdown of the insulation that we refer to as myelin on the nerve fibers. And that can be a cause of trigeminal neuralgia. When that is the situation, it is quite frequently the cause, we can go in surgically, make a small uh, incision behind the ear and go down to the brainstem and move that artery away from the nerve and with time the nerve will heal itself. Other times there can be irritation of the nerve by a tumor. And then likewise, we can go in and remove the tumor and remove the source of irritation. Sometimes uh, there is no obvious mechanical reason for the problem. It's something inherently wrong with the nerve, oftentimes in association with multiple sclerosis. That disease attacks the insulation of nerves and can attack the trigeminal nerve and cause uh, trigeminal neuralgia. In those situations, we will generally do a partially destructive procedure. What I mean by that is in the old days, like I say, we would cut the nerve completely. Now we try and do just a small amount of injury to the nerve that breaks the abnormal cycle of painful shocks and yet still leaves the patient with some sensation in the face, which can be quite important. I mean, totally numb is very, very annoying. And so there are a number of ways that we've devised over the years to do some sort of partial damage to the nerve. And one of the most commonly used ones today is radiosurgery, where we focus radiation on that particular segment of the nerve that we're interested in and deliver a high dose of radiation. And this is often done with the gamma knife. And uh, this can be a, an effective way to deal with the pain. Patients will often ask me if their trigeminal neuralgia is appropriate for gamma knife treatment. Um, Really, any true trigeminal neuralgia can reasonably be treated with stereotactic radiosurgery. The more important question is, does the patient actually have trigeminal neuralgia? And that may seem like sort of a silly question, but there are many different painful syndromes that can afflict the face. And only true trigeminal neuralgia seems to respond to any of our surgical treatments. When trying to decide if a patient actually has trigeminal neuralgia, the most important thing is actually the history. Their description of the pain is probably the uh, most important thing that you can get and also their response to various medications. Uh, for example, the person who has continuous burning pain throughout the entire face almost never has trigeminal neuralgia. That's going to fall into the bucket of atypical facial pain. Uh, the most classic description is, as I say, an electric shock. Someone says that out of nowhere, an electric shock occurs and it's on one side of the face only and often in a particular distribution of a branch of the trigeminal nerve. More diffuse pain on both sides, it is hard to localize and doesn't have that jolt-like characteristic is usually more atypical facial pain than trigeminal neuralgia. When deciding uh, among the various treatments, surgical treatments for trigeminal neuralgia, the gamma knife has the advantage of being uh, something that's an outpatient procedure, uh, very easy to perform, and has very low risk. The flip side of that, of course, you always have to weigh benefit versus risk, the good points, the bad points. The flip side of that is that uh, many patients will have return of their pain after a certain period of time after a gamma knife treatment. 
Now we can often do a second treatment and capture many of those who have lost control of their pain, but you can't do an unlimited number of treatments. Uh, over time, you will start to cause damage to the nerve that can be problematic. And so it's not something that can be repeated many times.